And greetings, friends. While the Passover is almost upon us, many in the Seventh-day Churches of God are starting to prepare to keep the Passover. Now, everybody knows the story of the Passover. Of course, the, pa the story of the Passover is a story of deliverance, of redemption, and salvation. Of course, Almighty God came in and delivered and saved and redeemed Israel out of Egypt, out of slavery. And of course, we see the story of the Israelites sacrificing the lamb on the Passover and taking the lamb's blood and smearing it on their doorposts. And then when the death angel came and saw the blood of the lamb on their homes, he passed over their homes and they were not put to death. And then the next day, those who were alive because of the blood of the lamb were set free. And in the New Testament, we basically see the same thing because Almighty God doesn't change his ways. Here we see the Father providing for the world a lamb. And through this lamb's blood, we have redemption, we have salvation, we have deliverance. And God continues to deliver even to this day. And I just want to show you here in Romans, the third chapter, this is just one example of the blood of the Lamb, which is, of course, Jesus Christ of Nazareth that takes away the sins of the world. Romans 3, verse 24, it says, being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. So we're redeemed through Jesus Christ, who is the Lamb. Notice verse 25. It says, whom God hath set forth to be a, it should read, an atoning sacrifice through faith in his blood. So we have faith in his blood, redemption in his blood, and then it says to declare his righteousness for, as the margin says, for the passing over of sins done aforetime. So all those sins that we did in the past, God passes over them because we are now covered in the blood of Jesus Christ, the atoning sacrifice for our sins. And this happens during baptism. In baptism, if you notice, uh, Romans the sixth chapter, it says here, that know ye not, verse three, that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death. So when we go into the waters of baptism, we are actually accepting the sacrifice of Jesus Christ and we are redeemed we are saved through his blood we are delivered from sin now Jesus Christ of Nazareth says that those who commit sin are slaves of sin but when we repent and uh, we are baptized and we receive the Holy Spirit we are redeemed from slavery we are redeemed from sin so God continues to deliver and even in times of persecution, Almighty God delivers His people from the hands of this world, from the hands of sinner. and I'll show you, sinners. And I'll show you uh, an example of that uh, in the book of Acts. But before I get on with that, I want to offer you this free booklet, Passover, Is It for Christians? And we go through with you all the scriptures to show that the church of God, people who believe in Christ, should keep the Passover. And it's all in that booklet, Passover Is It For Christians. And we'll put the link in the description below and you can download it directly from there. Hi guys, this is Peter Salemi of the Watchman Program. Did you know that your pineal gland is the bridge between the physical and the spiritual realms? And God even tells us so in Numbers the 12th chapter, verse 6. Even Jesus Christ spoke of the mind's eye or the inner eye in the Gospel of Matthew. Now your pineal gland can become inactive and that spiritual connection can become blocked. Now if you want to reconnect and activate your mind's eye, here's a great natural product that does just that. Pineal XT. This supplement is made with all natural non-GMO ingredients that will supercharge your pineal gland and you will be able to reconnect to the spiritual realm. Just click the affiliate link in the video description below and get your bottle of Pineal XT. Almighty God continues to deliver his people, either through repentance and baptism, as we just read in Romans the sixth chapter, but even through the time of persecution. Many people experience their own personal Passover. And here's one example in Acts the 12th chapter. Here we see King Herod who is persecuting 
the church. And then he finally got a hold of Peter in Acts 12, verse 3. And it says here that because he saw it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. And it says, then were the days of unleavened bread, talking about the season of the Passover, when he took Peter. It says he apprehended him, verse 4, and put him in prison and delivered, and delivered him to four quaternions of soldiers to keep him. Notice, intending after, now it says Easter in the King James, but the newer translations have the Passover. And I went through this passage in another uh, YouTube video. If you want to take a look at it on our YouTube channel, I talk specifically about this, uh, this uh, verse, Acts 12, verse 4, and show you that it should read the Passover and not Easter. So it says to keep him in, intending after the Passover to bring him forth to the people. So here we see Peter in prison during the time of the Passover. And it says in verse 5 that Peter therefore was kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. So here we see the whole church praying for Peter, and it's the time of the Passover. Now notice verse 7. It says, Behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him, and lighted, and a light shined in his prison, and it smote, and he smote Peter on the side, and raised him up, saying, Arise quickly. And his chains fell off from his hand. So he was set free. And then it says, And the angel said unto him, Gird yourself, and bind on thy sandals. Read Exodus 12, verse 11. God told them the same thing when he set them free on the Passover. Gird yourself, bind on your sandals. And so he did. And he said unto him, Cast thy gar garment about thee, and follow me. And then he followed the angel out, and he was free from prison. And then it says here that Peter says that the Lord hath sent his angel, and he had delivered me out of the hand of Herod, verse 11. So here we see Peter having his own personal Passover deliverance. So God does deliver, and he continues to deliver for his people. Now, in the book of Revelation, the 11th chapter, here we see the two witnesses, and they are raining plagues down on this world, and it's a type of what Moses and Aaron did back in the book of Exodus. They are raining plagues down on this world, on this great city, which the whole world partakes in, this great city, which is spiritually called Sodom and Egypt. So this world is called Sodom and Egypt. This world is a type of slavery, which of course this world is run by the God of this world, Satan the devil, 2 Corinthians 4, chapter, verse 4. And Satan the devil is oppressing this entire world and deceiving this entire world. So this whole world is under slavery. It's under sin. And here we see the two witnesses raining plagues down on this sin-sick world. So here we see that this world is spiritually called Egypt. Now, during this time in the book of Revelation, we see a lamb. And we see the symbols of the Passover. And here we see in Revelation, the fifth chapter, we see in verse 6, the lamb that had been slain. And then in verse 8, it says that the elders fell down before the lamb. And they sung a new song, verse 9, and it says that this lamb redeemed us unto God, redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. So here we see in this world called, spiritually called Egypt, the lamb is still redeeming people, still delivering people. People are experiencing their own personal Passovers in their lives, and of course, we continue to celebrate it when the Passover uh, comes every single year. A little later on, during the time of the Great Tribulation, uh, Revelation 7, in verse 9, here we see a great multitude, which no man could number, of all nations, kindreds, and, kindreds and people, and tongues. They stood before the throne, before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands. And then it says, Who are these? And John says, uh, Sir, thou knowest. And he says, These are they which came out of great tribulation, and have washed their robes, and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. So here we see in the time, in the book of Revelation, in the end time, God continues to deliver his people. 
through the blood of the Lamb. People are still being delivered and having their own personal Passover deliverances. Ladies and gentlemen, God does not change his ways. God continues to deliver his people. Revelation, the 15th chapter. Here we see the, the redeemed singing, verse 3. The song of Moses, the servant of God, and the song of the Lamb, saying, Great and marvelous are thy works, Lord God Almighty. Just and true are thy ways, thou King of saints. So here we see them, the redeemed, singing the song of Moses that we read of in Exodus, the 15th chapter. So God continues to deliver his people, and he will continue to do it right into the time of the kingdom of God. Well, life's been pretty good. Summer home, yacht, vacation when I wanted. <laughs> Some little kid sure spent a lot of time with that. Too bad they never last. Yeah, a lot of things are like that. The kids are grown now, and hmm, Sammy and I aren't getting any younger. Hmm. Is this all there is? You can know the answer to this age-old question. What is the purpose of human life? Download your free copy at BritishIsrael.ca. In Luke, the 22nd chapter, here we see Jesus Christ of Nazareth and his disciples celebrating the Passover, which is also called the Last Supper. Now, I did a separate video on this uh, topic, on the Passover and the Last Supper, and I show you that the Passover and the Last Supper are one and the same, and you can take a look at it on our YouTube channel. But notice what Jesus Christ says here in verse 15. He says, with desire, I have desire to eat this Passover. Notice the Last Supper is the Passover. To eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I say unto you, I will not any more eat thereof until it be fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Then a little later on, he says in verse 18, for I say unto you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God shall come. Now, what did he mean by that? Well, I want to show you this from Samueli Bacciocci's book, uh, God's Festival in Scripture and History. Excellent work. I urge everyone to pick up a copy of this if you can. And it's a great study on God's festivals. And he says this on page 59. He says, first, the phrase, I shall not eat it until implies that Christ expected the eating of the Passover to continue, which they did. You can read that in 1 Corinthians, the fifth chapter. Continue the eating of the Passover to continue during his absence until he would partake of it again in the coming marriage supper of the Lamb. And you can read that in Revelation, the 19th chapter, verse 9. The Passover that Christ expects to eat again consists of the emblems of his sacrifice since the following verse, I shall not drink again of the fruit of, a, of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. Then he says the second. Uh, second, the phrase, until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God, implies that for Christ, the ultimate fulfillment of Passover was still in the future. If Jesus viewed Passover as being completely fulfilled with his death, he would not have spoken of its future fulfillment in the kingdom of God. Leon Morris points out the reference to fulfillment of the kingdom of God indicates that the Passover has a typological significance. It commemorated a deliverance indeed, but it pointed forward to a greater deliverance which uh, would be seen in the kingdom of God. And so, as we've seen in some examples in the book of Revelation, God continues to deliver his people through the blood of the Lamb, but also he is going to bring back Israel in a second exodus back into the promised land. So this is why Jesus Christ says that the, he will not drink again of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. There are future fulfillments in the Passover and Israel and a new exodus coming in the very near future. Get this free booklet, Passover. Is it for Christians? Free of charge off our website, BritishIsrael.ca. Don't forget to like and subscribe to this uh, YouTube channel, and I'll see you here next time on The Watchman Program.